Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna to be reviewing how to file your taxes in 2023. There are a few things that have changed from 2022 filing to this year, so pay attention in case those affect you. So gather all your documents, grab some coffee and a comfy chair, like and subscribe, and let's go. I logged into TurboTax. If you've already done this before, you've got an account, just log into that same one. If you don't have an account, you can create one that's free to use, easy to set up. All you need to do is have an email to start. So I'm back on the main page. I've logged in and it just says, welcome to TurboTax. Here's what to expect. Let's go. Oh, look at that. They've even got my favorite phrase on here. So let's go. And again, we're filing in 2023 for the 2022 year. You can definitely apply all of this to previous years if you haven't filed for previous years before. But in today's video, I'm going to be going through 20 filing in 2023 for 2022 and the difference is that when you file in this year for 2022, there are certain laws and certain changes that will affect you that may not affect you in previous years. This year, I'm actually going to do it a little bit different. I'm not going to go through every single step of the way. I've got two videos from 21 and 22 that you can watch if you want a step-by-step -step tutorial. In this year's video, I'm really just going to talk about what has changed and how to find all the major things that we're going to stick in here. If you do want that step-by-step -step tutorial, go back. I will link the video down below as well as in this mainframe here so that you can choose that video and walk yourself step-by-step -step. again. Everything will still apply to you. TurboTax remains generally the same unless there are changes for that year that don't apply to you. But if there are, then those options just won't come up or will come up depending on what you choose as your situation. TurboTax always starts us on this page saying, hey, we're going to file your taxes, but before we start, we need to know a little bit more about you. You can check all the ones that apply to you or the ones that don't and then move on. Just for this purpose, I'm gonna choose a couple that are pretty normal so that we can move on to the next screen and I can show you exactly where to find everything you might need. So obviously you wanna maximize your deductions and credits, meaning you wanna get the biggest refund possible or get all the credits that you qualify for. So I'm gonna say that I have a job, I owned a home, I have children and dependents, and then I'm gonna say I sold stock, crypto, or rental property. That's not always super common, but in case I'm going to do one that's kind of out of the ordinary, just so I can teach you how to find everything. I'm going to hit continue. If you need help, you can ask for that tax expert to help you. If you don't and you think you can do most of it, they can help you check your work or you can, you're comfortable doing it on your own. I'm going to click this option just because I'm going to go through it with you guys and I don't need extra pop ups. The one thing that does get kind of annoying with TurboTax is they're always going to offer you the next plan, the next amount, whatever it costs, they're going to list it for you. So that does pop up pretty often, but just know you don't ever have to do those things. At the end of it, they will tell you how much you're going to have to pay, but that depends really on how you're filing your taxes and what deductions you need. In this case, I'm going to hit this start for free and only pay when you file, meaning I could go through everything up until the end. But if I don't actually file with TurboTax and I decide it's too expensive, then I can just exit out on this page. It's going to pull what I put in for last year and you just want to make sure this is right. So let's say that I had a new baby and I bought a home. You can even put in that you moved, you got married, all that stuff, whatever applies to you. But we're just going to leave it like that for me. Any financial changes, let's say I paid a college tuition. I got a raise and I'm going to leave the other ones. Last thing, did any of these happen? Did you get any of these in the mail? And everything is supposed to be sent to you by the 31st. Like I said a few times already, if not, keep waiting a couple days and then contact those companies if you haven't seen it within that first week of February. If you did get any one of these, then make sure you put them down. I'm going to do this one just because it's a new one for this year that will apply to a lot of people. This is just TurboTax saying we're going to use your info only for filing taxes, not to send you junk mail in any way, shape or form. You can read through that. And then if you're filing jointly, you can click this. OK, so now TurboTax is getting all of this stuff together so that everything will work out. It's saying, hey, we're pretty sure we can finish in an hour and a half. And actually, this is a new thing this year. I haven't seen this before, so that's actually really cool. It says 25% of filers finish in 62 minutes, so roughly an hour. Oh, they've even got this little race mode up here. That's awesome. Always know that when you start filing your taxes, you don't have to finish. Just make sure you save it before you log out, and TurboTax will always have it ready for you when you return. If you've got a couple things going on on the weekend or at night and you get too busy to finish, 
things are a little bit harder than you thought it would be, you can save it, exit out, and come back and finish it later. So TurboTax, if you haven't used this before, you can see the federals over here, states over here. You put in all your information to start off with, and then you can go anywhere you want. Like I said, I'm not going to walk through every single step just because it's pretty much the same as last year. I will, however, show you where to find things. So once you put in that info, you just hit continue. If you don't want to touch anything on this side, you literally just hit continue, continue, and it'll walk you through every single step of the way as long as you're answering those questions to your situation. TurboTax will lead you everywhere that you need to go to get all of that information in. If you, for some reason, aren't able to find something and it doesn't pop up the way you want it to, there's this search bar up here and you can type whatever you want. As of right now, because you haven't typed anything, there's no history, then all of these things are going to be the most searched for questions like downgrading to a lower price version of TurboTax, clearing and starting over, entering form 1099, importing a W-2. If you click on those, let's say this, It'll show you how to do it, which is great. Or I can just put in W-2 and it says jump to W-2. And that's for a lot of topics that they have. So you'd be able to just jump and put in your W-2. And you can see on this side, it's on wages and income. And that's the section. If you click on this, it'll bring you, hey, let's talk about income. You can add your income. And yes, people have asked me before, you can put in more than one W-2. When you're done, you just select the option that says I have another one to import or to add. And you add in that second one because some people have more than one job or swap jobs during the year. So I'm going to jump to this over here, deductions and credits. We've got all these check-ins. You're doing great. Oh, TurboTax is always so encouraging. So it's just saying, let's find other tax breaks that might apply. Yes, no, all this other stuff. I'm going to say no. See how it keeps going like that. It's going to ask you these questions. And when you answer them, it keeps going and you're able to just put in all your answers. And then TurboTax runs you through everything that you need to do. If you take a look up here, you can see that the federal refund has popped up. Right now I'm at zero because I haven't put in any information. Once you start putting in information, it's going to show you how much you're getting back in green or how much you owe the IRS in red. As of right now, because we're in the federal, we haven't moved on to anything state. It's only federal showing. Once you move on to your state, your state will show up next to it as well. Other tax situations, they are here as well. So you can keep going. And these are more uncommon ones, but that doesn't mean they don't apply to you. If you're looking for something, you can go through that section. Or if you can't find it, like I said, use that search bar or the help bar, which are both great tools. One thing I do want to show you guys is the 1099K. And I'm showing this to you because it's a big change in 2023 that will affect a lot of people. Because paying for and selling items online has become so popular, the IRS changed their law so that if you sell anything and make a profit of $600 or more, you're required to put this in your taxes. So let's say if you sold your couch, on Facebook for $1,000, you bought it for $400, you made a profit of $600, you're gonna get a 1099K, this form from Facebook, and you're gonna need to report it on here. And this just says, hey, if you sell services online, all these electronic services, PayPal, Square, you're gonna need to do this. As I said, it's over $600. If you have more than one, they're allowing you to do that as well. So I'm just gonna say yes to show you guys how to do this. You can upload it, I'm gonna type it in myself. So you're just gonna put in information about how you made this money, Let's say I sold personal items and then they're going to ask for all the information about that 1099K. Just like every other form, you just put in what the form says and you hit continue and it will change this as needed. I just put in information here as a test. Let's say, like I said, I sold it for $600 and no federal income tax was withheld. I got the full $600. I'm going to hit continue and they're just going to say, hey, yep, we've got it. If you want to add another one, you just hit this one. Let's say you sold something else somewhere else. You can add it there. If that's all you have, you can just hit done. That's how you add the 1099K. Like I said, in the past, it was more for people who were self-employed or contractors who worked with different companies and whatnot. This year, it applies to a lot more people because it's getting so popular and the IRS changed the law. That's all I'm going to be walking through for TurboTax. I do want to go over a few things on the IRS's website just that they've highlighted as the big changes in 2023 as you're filing for 2022. I'll leave this page in the links down below, but this is just the IRS 
highlighting all those big changes in 2023. Like I already went over that Form 1099K. The next big thing is that some tax credits are returning to 2019 levels. And that is if you have kids and you qualified for the child tax credit, earned income tax credit, or the child and dependent care credit. And so during COVID, things got a little crazy. They upped it to 3,600 per dependent in 2021. This is going from that 3,600 back down to 2,000. You're not gonna have to pay back that amount. You just won't get as big of a credit. So if you previously got that $3,600, your refund might look a little smaller this year because you're not getting as big of a credit as you were per child. In the same way for the EITC, it's going from 1500 back to 500. And lastly, those that did get that $8,000 credit for the child independent care credit in 2021, this is gonna go back to 2100. Another big change is no above the line charitable deductions. This just means if you donated a lot of items or money, you could have gotten up to $600 as a deduction. This is not the case anymore. You just kind of get the standard deduction. This isn't really a change, just a note for 2022, a lot of people still qualify for that premium tax credit. You can check to see if that applies to you and there's a little link here. You can just click on that and read through it for yourself to see if that applies to you. And lastly, eligibility rules for those with clean vehicles, that has changed as well. And all of that is on this page. I will link all of it down below for you. Those are the big changes for 2022 filing in 2023. I'm gonna hop back to TurboTax as a big reminder, wherever you are in filing taxes, if you have not finished, make sure that you save. And when I say save, there is no real save button. It's just moving on to the next step. If you said yes to anything and you're in the middle of putting that information in, make sure you finish putting that information in and then click continue or whatever the next button says. And once you hit that button, it'll save for you. And then you can sign out down here below and start again next time when you're able to sign in again. If you've done this before, minimal changes this year, you will be able to walk right through it. Just again, if you haven't, it's your first time. Again, check out my other videos to walk you through every single step. If you have any other questions, leave a comment down below, email me. I've been getting a lot more emails lately and it's always great touching base with you guys. Last but not least, if you didn't already, please hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you soon.